Hi there. So a friend sent me this video about the continuum hypothesis, which says it has a solution to it. Uh, and I thought I'd react to it. I haven't watched it yet. So if you don't understand why that's uh, an interesting claim, the continuum hypothesis is basically uh, a statement in set theory that has to do with cardinals. So those are different sizes of infinity. You can basically think of it like this. The continuum hypothesis says that there are no uh, intermediate sizes of infinity between the size of the naturals and the size of the reals. So that would be aleph null, uh, that's the smallest infinity, and then the size of the continuum, which in cardinal language is 2 to the aleph null. So basically it says that after aleph null, there's 2 to the aleph null and there's nothing in between. That's what the continuum hypothesis says. So People tried to prove this for a long time. It was actually a really interesting endeavor to try and prove it. Uh, but it turns out that uh, it's not possible because it's undecidable in our set theory. So in uh, ZFC, so, so Melo Frankel's set theory with choice, it turns out that you can construct a model of ZFC in which the continuum hypothesis does hold and you can construct one in which it doesn't hold. What this means is that this is a statement that's independent of our set theory. That means that uh, the set theory is what's called equiconsistent. It's consistent <coughs> with the statement, the continuum hypothesis is true, and it's consistent with the statement, the continuum hypothesis is false. Now, there's a thing about set theory where we, we don't exactly, we can't exactly prove that set theory is consistent internally, but suppose for, for a second that set theory is consistent, then it's not possible that the continuum hypothesis is a theorem because to be consistent means you can't prove a contradiction. And if there was a proof of the continuum hypothesis from ZFC, uh, if there was you know, a decision, that would be a contradiction because the negation is also consistent with it. So that tells us that there is no solution solution in ZFC to the continuum hypothesis. Uh, it's, what called, it's what is called an uh, independent or undecidable statement. Claiming that you have a solution to the continuum hypothesis is not a good look because mathematicians have known for like 80 years now that that's not possible. So let's stop the video and see what they have to say. My name is Colin Power from Into Infinity, and today we're going to be solving the world's most challenging problem of the last century, continuum hypothesis, using just a piece of paper and a pen. So, already explained, but let me reiterate, this is not a problem. We have the solution. The solution is, it's independent. You can't prove this, you can't prove it, or it's negation. Before we do, let's have a little think about this nature of infinity. It started to become quite a topic at the end of the 1900s when a guy called George Cantor... Uh, there's a little historical inaccuracy there. He either means at the end of the 1800s or the beginning of the 1900s. Uh, the Cantor started thinking about set theory and uh, infinities in the end of the 19th century. Describe, Describe something, something called an infinite, infinite set. set. I started to differentiate between different types of infinity. So here we have a line, and it's divided into three. Yeah? And what George Cantor did, he said, what happens if we remove that line? And you'd, you'd be left with just two. Yeah? So he's, uh, going, he's talking about the construction of the Cantor set here. So let's see if he does it properly. But the Cantor set is a very interesting set in, in topology and measure theory. It has very interesting properties. Yeah. So one third would be missing, yeah. and then if you could, you can, you can also divide that and take out the middle third of these parts, and you have another you know, third missing there, third missing there, and each time we move through, we're removing a third section from the middle of each line. And so we can continue moving a third into infinity, yeah, so the gap here, there's an infinite number of those gaps that you can create, yeah, those gaps there. There are also an infinite number of these things here. But if you think about it, because there's two of those, that this is a larger type of infinity than this infinity here. I'm not sure what he's, what he means here. Editing Yam here. 
I think he means that there's two gaps for each point, but uh, actually one of the properties of the Cantor set is that no points are isolated. So even if you go really, really close around a point, you'll always find other points from the set. So actually you can't define gaps in this set. So what he's saying makes even less sense than what I thought. It is true that there are infinitely many steps and that like there are countably many steps and uncountably many points, but I'm not sure if he's saying that the resulting set has more points than the set you started with, which like, no, uh, like if you want to be technical in topological terms, it has more points. And the set above, the set you started with, has more points. But even then, they're in bijection. They have the same cardinality. This infinity has one, two for every one that's missing there. So it has two for every one there. So that shows you that there are different... Um, okay, so there's a very uh, easy, I couldn't, like, logical error here to make when you're first dealing with infinities. is that cardinal arithmetic, or uh, adding, thinking about infinities, is uh, unintuitive. So basically, if you add, for example, uh, a cardinal number, so, so Aleph Null, for example, to itself, first of all, what, did that, what does that even mean? Adding two infinities. So you have to define that. But suppose you define that. It turns out that two of these is actually the same thing as one of it. So for if you need an example, Take the set of even numbers and the set of odd numbers. Each of these is infinite. It has it is countably infinite. It's Aleph null. And if we combine them together, we get the natural numbers, which also have cardinality Aleph null. So at the end of the day, two times Aleph null is equal to Aleph null. So having saying that this has two points for each point here, that doesn't actually mean anything. Like that doesn't mean that one infinity is necessarily larger. It's actually kind of hard to start with one cardinal and just by doing basic operations uh, reach a cardinal that's larger. It shows you that there are different types of infinity. It was, so, for example, let's take all of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on into infinity. We could say that is a certain set of number. But the problem is, is as we go through these numbers, there's a lot more numbers in between here. Look, that would be 0.5, for example, yeah? With 2.5, yeah, wouldn't it there? And actually, there's an infinite number of these tiny little... In I am not sure what he's getting at. Uh, if you think of the natural numbers as just a set by themselves, then no, they don't have any points between them. It's just the collection of symbols, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., it's just a collection of symbols. It is a subset of the real numbers. And if you consider it inside the real numbers, there's numbers in between them. But that's not what we mean when we say the set of natural numbers. The, in, the divisions in between each number space. And that creates a sort of bit of a conundrum, really. Because in this sense, we could say that this is one set of numbers. And that set of numbers is an infinite set. But it's smaller than this, which they call, you know, the... the yeah, that, that is correct. The set of natural numbers has smaller cardinality than the set of real numbers. In fact, if you take all the natural numbers, there's less of them, much less than there are between just zero and one, or zero and a half, or zero and a quarter. You can keep going. Just real numbers, there's a lot of them. That's not a contradiction. Infinite set of uh, real numbers and everything else like that. Aleph one's all of these whole numbers. No. Aleph null is all of the whole numbers. Aleph one is, first of all, it is. So the thing is that the continuum hypothesis says that Aleph one is the cardinality of the real numbers. What does Aleph one actually mean? It means basically the next bigger number after Aleph null. Just like after, like the smallest uh, natural number after one is two, you can show that there is a next number for cardinals, for infinite cardinals. Uh, this is because they're well-ordered, if you know what that means, uh, under the axiom of choice. But without the axiom of choice, the concept of cardinals isn't even defined. Aleph 1 is the next higher infinity. And basically, the continuum hypothesis says that it is the real numbers. So there's nothing in between. 
So that's equivalent to what I said before. To solve the continuum hypothesis, Cantor suggested that there was no infinite set that existed between those two. If you imagine it's like you have to think of things in terms of density, how many, what's the density of the numbers, you know? So this is another thing that a lot of people get wrong initially, but there is a concept of density, but density doesn't have to do with cardinality. You say that one set is dense in another, if, in some sense, if we get near any point of the biggest set, there's always points of the smallest set inside. So, for example, uh, between every two real numbers, there is a rational number. So we say that rationals are dense in the real. But surprise, rationals are still cannibal. They have the same cardinality as the naturals. So it doesn't have to do with density, actually. So with those unit spacings of those numbers, it's just going up one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Whereas with the infinite decimals, the, the, it's very difficult to determine uh, how much it's progressing. So there's an infinite number of decimals, yeah? They can, can start with a zero point, da, 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 da. And because of that nature, it creates a paradox in mathematics. I'm not sure what he means. There is no paradox. Like. Why would there be a paradox that some infinities are bigger than others? That doesn't create a logical contradiction. That is Cantor's famous diagonal argument. Uh, it has nothing to do with the continuum hypothesis, actually. Aleph 1 would be the whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 into infinity, whereas Aleph 0 would include all of the decimal fractions as well. Is there an infinity between Aleph 1 and Aleph 0? And we're going to prove that there is actually an infinity. Finally. Let's dive into this uh, proof. If it's as good as the video is so far, then I have very high hopes. So to start with, we've got a column over here. We write the number one in there, yeah? That's our step one. And over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write one over one. It's a fraction, yeah? One over one equals one. So let's go to the second step, yeah? And here we're gonna go one over two, and then two over two equals 1.5. And as we... Uh, Is he okay? So he's adding them together for some reason. So, okay, three, two over three, and three over three. Now that and that equals two. And you can see what's happening here is that every step this takes a one step, it goes one and jumps down there. When this jumps down, it jumps down just a half, and this jumps down to one, it jumps in. This person seems to be under the false impression that the cardinality has to do with the number of steps between them. But, okay, I think the confusion lies here. People sometimes think that if you can find a map between two sets that is injective but not bijective, that is, you associate every number from here to here, that means the cardinality is bigger. But... That's the thing with infinite sets. I can create a map from the even numbers to the natural numbers, which just maps every number to itself, which, which doesn't hit all the natural numbers. There's the, all the odd numbers. So what, are there less even numbers? Well, in some senses, yes, but in the sense of cardinality, no, because I can find a, I can find a map that is bijective between them. So if you want one, you can just like send all the multiples of two that are multiples of four to the even numbers and all the multiples of four that are multiples, all the multiples of four uh, that she didn't send, send them to the odd numbers and that works. So uh, the set, step size doesn't have anything to do with it. Like you can match two sets and if they're infinite, you can even find a map from a set to itself, which isn't bijective. So it doesn't prove that this is a bigger infinity. Jumps another half, this jumps to one, this jumps another half. And so this is progressing at one half of this, which is progressing at one. Yeah, and it will continue like that. Yeah, so he basically, angry people outside. Uh, he's basically saying like, oh, I found this map that is, again, only maps half of the elements, but actually, like there's a bijection. Obviously, there are as many numbers uh, if you add halves as there are natural numbers. That's still a countable set.
on into infinity. And so each one of these lines connects along like that. And really what you get is, if you think about it, you get a square like that with a diagonal going straight the way through, yeah? Which, and we call that the square root of two, yeah? If we call that a unit of one, yeah? So that's the square root of two going across that middle line there, yeah? Now, if we take LF 0.5, because it's only progressing in half steps, and so actually it goes up like this. Aleph 0.5 is not a thing. I He didn't even mention this until now. Like, I don't know what to say even. This is, it's not even wrong. Like, this isn't the math that other people are doing. So he's not doing math. It goes uh, from one to one, one to one point five, one to another, one to another. But because this is, this is shrinking, yeah, in size. He's talking about the, the slope, but again, like the size of the set doesn't depend on the mappings that you choose. Like there's no math here. So basically what he's doing is he's taking uh, like functions and I guess assigning them through this obscure process that isn't actually well defined in my opinion, like a number. And then he says, oh, this is the like size of the infinite set is what he's probably going to say. This infinity is denser because it's compressed. It, I will say again, density has nothing to do with it. Uh, there is something called natural density uh, that you can associate to infinite sets. That's not cardinality. That's not what the continuum hypothesis is about. It's fine to do math that like says, oh, in some sense, there is a something between them, but that's not the continuum hypothesis. But uh, I digress because what he's doing here is not even that. That means we can compress things to the halfway mark, the 0.5 mark. And that's why we call it Aleph 0.5. So that's resolved the continuum hypothesis. The question was, is there an infinity that is, you know, what was that in that straight line? I would like to know what is the, the slope of the real numbers, because like he didn't even try and tackle that because he could, he wouldn't be able to define it. Aleph 0.5. And now Aleph 0.5 has many implications for a lot of other things in mathematics that we're going to look into next, yeah? But before we do, we're going to also maybe give a bit more of a satisfying uh, solution to what this kind of means for numbers and infinite set theory. So coming up next, yeah, will be a solution to the Russell paradox and much, much more. So remember... Okay, so I guess I'll finish by saying you can't solve Russell's paradox. Russell's paradox showed that naive set theory, which wasn't defined, didn't provide a consistent logical system. Uh, you had to constrain it, which is where axiomatic set theory came from, trying to formalize what set theory is in a way that wouldn't cause contradictions. And along the way, they discovered that actually, you never know if your thing is actually consistent, but there is some sort of meta theory that tells us that it, it is and it should be. So that's the video. Uh, Quite interesting, I have to say. Uh, you can leave any insight that you uh, have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.